Hi, how y'all doing today? I went to Civit AI and I grabbed 10 of their photorealistic stable diffusion models and I grabbed three of their top anime stable diffusion models and I tested them out in automatic 1111 using the same prompt and the same negative prompt. Let's get started and stick around to the end because there's some surprises in here because I chose some models that aren't necessarily trained for photorealistic images of people. So stick around, you'll be surprised about how some of these turned out. For the prompt, as you see on the screen here, I started off with raw photo, masterpiece, best quality. I gave that a weight of 1.4, realistic, full body, highly detailed skin, and then I got into the description of the photo. A serene woman with delicate features sits gracefully on the edge of a cozy bed, bathed in the warm golden hour morning light that streams through a nearby window. Her soft wavy hair cascades gently around her shoulders, framing her face. She wears a short, closed, luxurious silk robe adorned with intricate Asian print featuring blossoming flowers and delicate birds. The robe's vibrant colors and patterns contrast beautifully with the calm, neutral tones of the bedroom. The sunlight casts a soothing glow on her face, accentuating her expressive eyes, gentle smile, and flawless complexion. The peaceful scene evokes a sense of tranquility and relaxation. And then at the end, I added some different qualifiers trending on art station 8k uhd dslr soft lighting high quality film grain fujifilm xt3 and then that was the base prompt i used for every single model and then i put in a negative prompt and as you can see here i'll put this up on the screen but as usual all the settings that i used will be down in the pinned comment uh, below so go ahead and check it out there if you want to use these or test them on your own Now once I put in the prompt and the, pos the positive prompt and the negative prompt Then I put in the modifications of the image size which I used 512 by 910 I used a CFG scale of 11.5 a sampling method of DPM plus plus SDE Karas Hope I'm saying that right. And then I turned restored faces on. Before we get into showing you what the models are, I just wanted to say real quick that some of these models are, well, pretty much all these models are capable of not safe for work images. So if that is a concern of yours, make sure you put NSFW in the negative tags and that will cut down on the not safe for work images popping up. If you'd like to see more of this type of model review, please let me know and I will make sure to do some more in the future. So let's get into it. We're going to start off with the anime models. The first anime model we tried was Abyss Orange Mix. And as you can see here, the results are actually fairly decent. My only real complaint with this particular one is that it's a little washed out. Um, the color scheme is a little bit muted. I mean, it's still nice. It's very good, but the color scheme's a little on the muted side. And then for the second one, we chose Perfect World. And as you can see here in this particular image, it returned a very nice image, but it's more of a sensualized style of anime, which looks very nice. It's not something I would choose on my own, but I really like the results. And then we have Rev Animated. And this is the result that it returned and as you can see I think it's a nice mix between abyss orange and perfect world although the face on the image for me is a little on the small side so that's not something I really care for but it's a still a very nice image very good composition the layout is very nice the coloring is very nice I think it's a, a good image overall and now on to the photorealistic models the first one that we tried was one called BRA, standing for Beautiful Realistic Asians Version 5. And as you can see by this particular model, it does an amazing job. I especially like the skin tone, the lighting. It's a really good image. My only nitpick about this image is as you can see on her right sleeve, the embroidery there is a little blurred. If you were taking this with a real camera at the depth of field that they're using, that sleeve would not be blurred at all. 
So that's the only thing that kind of stands out to me at, on this particular image. One thing I did notice is when I ran this prompt uh, across the various models is that a lot of the images you'll see that the models put their hands between their thighs. I still don't know why that happened, but uh, you'll see that on a lot of the models. The next one on our list is called Chill Out Mix. And as you can see here, the image that it return returned is really incredible. Although it's a little bit more on the digital painting side than on the photorealistic side, but still it returned a really nice image. As you can see, the embroidery on the robe is very nice. The posing is good. And the lighting, the lighting is a little bit flat, though it does come from, it highlights her hair from the window behind her, which is a nice touch. The one thing that I noticed on a lot of these images is where I put in the prompt very specifically that she was, her face was being bathed by the light from the window. As you'll see in a lot of these images, she's staring away from the window, not staring into it. So that was one of the things that kind of disappointed me on this. I'm sure I could probably put prompts around it to increase that chance, but just on the, the base prompt itself, this is what was returned. Okay, so the next one we're gonna get into is Deliberate. Deliberate's an old time favorite, and for doing photorealistic images, it returns a great image. As you can see here on the screen, the image that was returned is really well done. It almost looks absolutely perfect. It, the only thing that stands out to me is the earrings. They're a little on the blurry side, and for this style of image, they wouldn't be that blurry. They would be a lot crisper, a lot sharper. And the second thing I noticed is that the embroidery on the robe isn't what I described in the prompt. It put more of the uh, embroidery on the accents of the robe, but not on the robe itself. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is lo-fi. Lo-fi is, lo is one of the newer ones on that I've been able to find. Now, it may have been around for a while, but I've, I have only recently just run across it. And as you can see here, the image that I returned is incredible. The only thing that I have a little bit of a problem with is down around her knees. The positioning of that makes it feel like she has her bottom legs cut off. But everything else within, and again, if I ran this image a few times, I'm sure that I could get that in a much better pose. But as you can see again, the hands are between the thighs and she's facing away from the window. But I love the look on her face. I love the expression. It's really well done. They do faces and hair and, and things lighting really, really well. I just think I'd just have to play with the prompt a little bit more in order to get something that was perfect in my eyes. And then next on our list, we have Real Biter. This is another one that I didn't know existed until I do, started doing searches on uh, Civit AI. And as you can see on this image, the pose is great the, the coloring the, the the fact that they got the all the body parts correct they got the embroidery on the robe very nicely i love the blurred out lighting scene behind her it highlights her hair nicely she's got a good expression on her face my only problem with this is that it seems to be a little muted kind of reminds me of the abyss orange mix uh, coloring that we saw earlier on one of the anime photos. And then we're going to go into my favorite uh, model for doing realistic photos, and that is Realistic Vision 2. Now, as you can see by this image, it is probably one of the best that I've seen, at least in my opinion. At least in my opinion. If you see one here that you like that is different, please do let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on why you prefer one model over another. But as you can see here, the skin tone is perfect. It looks very realistic skin. The embroidery on her robe is extremely nice. The pose is great. The, the backlighting is incredible. I really like this image a lot. Okay, so now we're gonna get into a couple models that weren't trained specifically for people. And I just grabbed those on the off chance of seeing what it is that they actually returned. 
And the first one we're going to start off with is called 2D Fake Disassemble 2D. And it was made for generating blow-up images, uh, basically deconstructed images like this one that's on the screen. It shows you the guitar and all the pieces around it. This is what it was designed for, this type of image. But when you put a person into it, this is the result. And as you can see, this is fantastic. The lighting, the style of the robe, the pose. I really love the lamp in the background, how the light is shining through the, the shade on the lamp and it's giving a different color tone that's reflecting off the background. This is amazing. If somebody told you that this was a real photo and I didn't have a skeptical mind, I would swear that this was a real photo. It's really, really well done. Then we're going to go on to another one that was made for people, but it was made for cyberpunk style images. At least that's the impression that cyber realistic gives you. But when I looked at the images that were on the models page, they weren't very cyberpunkish. Uh, matter of fact, none of them would I would look at and say that's a cyberpunk image. As you can see here on the screen, it is capable of returning amazing images. And this is one of the few that actually has the light of the sun, the light of the window shining on her face, which I thought was a great touch. I would definitely use this one in the future because I think it gives great results. All right, now we're going to get into the last two models here. And these ones are the ones that surprise me most because they're so far away from what they were designed for. First one we're going to look at is one called Dreamscapes and Dragonfire DNW 3.0. Now, this was a Dungeons and Dragons character model, which is, as you can see it here on the screen, it's capable of generating some really good fantasy images. And on, this one is going to stay in my library for a very long time because I love these types of images. When you put in a picture of a human, you know, you don't want an alpha, you just want a, a realistic looking photo, this is the result that you get. And it, like the others, is incredible. I love the cherry blossom trees behind her fade into a more and more blurry state. So it got the depth of field really well in this image. The embroidery on the robe is a little bit different than I would expect, but overall, I think it's a great image. The positioning of the legs seems a little off to me, but again, if I generated a few more images, I'm sure I'd get something that would be a perfect image. But for something that was designed for D&D characters, this one is really well. Now we're gonna get into the last one. And the last one is something that surprised me the most of all the models. This one is called Food Photography, and it's capable of creating images like you see here on the screen. As you can see, it does food photography very, very well, and that's what it was trained for. But when you ask it to do a human, this is what you get. And again, stunning. The lighting on her face from the window, she's actually facing the window, which is nice, comes across her face perfectly. It looks like the lighting is, of all the images I created, this one has, in my opinion, the most realistic lighting. You can tell that the only lighting source that is in this image is coming from the window to her right, or her left as the case may be. But her robe has some nice embroidery touches. I do like the pattern on on the, the accents here. But overall, this is, I mean, as far as lighting, this one's my one of my favorite. The skin tone is a little bit rough, but other than that, I think that food photography is able to do some really stunning images of people. So there you have it, 13 models that are capable of producing amazing results. The next time somebody tells you that Model X is the best one out there for doing X, Y, or Z, take it with a grain of salt because pretty much any model is capable of generating some stunning images. You just have to look beyond the name and try it out with different aspects. So now that you've seen all of the images and all from 13 different models, which one surprised you the most? Let me know, know down in the comments. And if you have any models that you think that we should take a look at or that you prefer, let us know down in the comments what you know, the model name and what it is that you use that particular model for. I'd love to hear more views on different types of models. That's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this one. It was a lot of fun and I will see you in the next video. As always, I wish you a fantastic day. Have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye.